Oh, it's Scott Manley here with another episode of Scott's Deep Space Network. This is September 22nd and great things have been happening. Let's start out with Acapella Gravity, a YouTube channel which has published a quite amazing production. It is a reimagining of Queen's Bohemian Rhapsody, all done a cappella style and with all the lyrics replaced by references to super string theory. This is quite frankly astounding. I do not even understand all the words myself. Well, actually, I understand the words, I just don't understand it clearly in the level of detail that the singer is. He's a great singer. It's great to watch. Go and check it out. I would really like to see Brian May's reaction to this because I don't know if you know Queen's guitarist Brian May. He was actually doing a PhD in astronomy when he more or less quit it to become a internationally famous rock star. But he actually went back recently and got his PhD in astronomy. So I'd be curious to see what he thinks about the, this reworking. Also, I note that uh, the B612 Foundation, my uh, you know, my favorite bunch of people that want to save the world from killer asteroids through charitable donations from people like you, um, they named a strategic advisory board, which includes Brian May. It also includes Tim O'Reilly, who, of course, creates uh, many of the best-known non-fiction technical books, let's say. David Brin, author of great fiction books. Jerry Zucker and his wife Janet Zucker. Jerry Zucker uh, is one of the producers of Airplane. So we basically have music, films, TV, fiction and non-fiction on this board. Uh, it's a collection of amazing people. I just thought I'd give them a mention. And uh, yes, yeah, speaking about Deep Impacts, Deep Impact completed its mission. It's finally been turned off after a very successful extended mission. Deep Impact originally set out to fly into a comet and drop a, a chunk of copper into it to create a crater so that we could actually see under the surface of the, the top crust of a comet. And uh, it did that, but you know the flash and the dust cloud produced actually made it very hard to see what it had done. So it continued on its merry way and later on Stardust flew past the comet and got a much better view of the damage that had been done. It threw 5,000 tonnes of material uh, off the surface with this small impact. Deep Impact itself, it went and flew past the Earth one more time and then went on to encounter some other comets and actually studied exoplanets using the same instrumentation. So it was a very successful mission. In more space news, Orbital Sciences and Terry's rockets successfully launched their Cygnus uh, cargo vehicle into space, into orbit. It is going to rendezvous with the International Space Station if all goes well. However, things haven't been quite going as well as they expected. The docking has been aborted a couple of times and they have now put off the rendezvous and docking until this Saturday, until more crew arrive at the space station. However, it's still a great day for a private space flight. We now have two different different companies that can compete to send cargo to the International Space Station. EVE Online developers CCP have announced that they will announce, this is a meta announcement, on Thursday they will announce the first uh, new details about the new Christmas expansion for EVE Online and no doubt everybody that plays the markets will be logging into this to check on what might change and make some speculative investments based upon what crumbs of information they can glean from this stream. So have your market alts ready. In other EVE Online news, after 1,132 days, Test Alliance, please ignore, are able to be ignored since they now lo no longer have any SOV systems anywhere in the game. They are now free to go about their business. Now that may seem like bad news for Test, but it seems that last week was full of bad news. What with Grand Theft Auto V being launched and getting all the press attention, it seems that last week was a good time to sneak out some bad news from uh, various games companies. For example, Blizzard announced that they would be removing the auction house from Diablo 3. Warhammer Online announced that it was going to be shutting down. And MechWarrior Online finally launched, officially. Not so much with a bang, but with a whimper. It seems that most of the entertainment from MechWarrior Online has come from the drama surrounding the backers. And speaking of backers, 
Star Citizen, of course, continues its meteoric rise. It passed $19 million and revealed pictures of the female avatar in her uh, spacesuit and you know cop outfit or whatever. Uh, they announced they were going to have uh, extend the fundraising out to $23 million, and they also revealed photos of the interiors of the pirate spacecraft, the Caterpillar and the Cutlass. And because the Caterpillar had been in some demand, they had a flash sale for three days, during which you could buy this limited ship for the princely sum of $225. At last count, it looks like they've made almost half a million dollars, and the $20 million stretch goal will soon be revealed. And Cloud Imperium Games used the opportunity to push out a new update to the hangar module, fixing a whole bunch of bugs and shortcomings, and now allowing Constellation owners to access the bathroom at the back of their spacecraft, and indeed sit on the toilet. And with that mention of bodily functions, it's time to talk about methane, or rather the lack of it in the Martian atmosphere. For some time it had been thought that traces of methane had been observed by previous space missions, and that uh, this was a sure indicator that there was some sort of biological process going on on Mars. Well, the results are in from curiosity and they are not good. There is no evidence pointed to by any of the results indicating that there is any methane on the surface of Mars. Well, that may not actually be the end of the story, because the MAVEN mission is an orbiter which is going to be examining the Martian atmosphere in extreme detail. It just has arrived at uh, the Space Centre, getting ready for launch later in the year. So we'll probably find out more information about Mars' atmosphere later, or well, next year actually, when it gets into orbit. But, if you're a Spaceship fan and you do not own the X Games, uh, then you do not have time to waste. You've got to get over to HumbleBundle.com and look at their weekly sale because they have the entire X Superbox there, with a, including even the, the Rebirth soundtrack as well. So, uh, yeah, I know I mentioned Humble Bundle last week. Well, this week they're even more awesome. Finally, I want to give a shout out to The Long Dark. It is a, a Kickstarter, which is a survival, post-apocalypse survival game set in the northern wilderness. Uh, I think the, the premise is that there has been a giant solar flare or some other event, which has basically rendered everything electronic in the entire world useless. And you are stuck out in the middle of nowhere with just but nothing but your wits to help you survive. That's The Long Dark. Check it out on Kickstarter. And uh, this is Scott Manley. Time to sign off. Fly safe.